to change your life. Really, you need ideas. There isn't anything an idea can't change. The major problem is lack of an idea. At first, I didn't have any money. I said to Mr. Schof, I don't have any money. He said, that's not a problem. Now see, up until then, I always thought it was. I was confused. He said, no, no. The problem is lack of an idea on how to create money and wealth. It isn't lack of money, it's lack of ideas. So if you get the ideas, so you can change anything now. To get ideas, you need a constant study of finding out. Now Schaff also said, when you find out something that works, put the information in in your journal. Don't use your head for a filing cabinet. Put it in your journal so that you can do the next best thing. Repetition, repetition, repetition. Go over it, and if you repeat it, go over it. Sure enough, someday, some mysterious day, the idea takes root, starts to grow, and shows up in your bank account, and your dress, and your personality, and your lifestyle. Our lives are mostly affected by the way we think things are. Not the way they are, the way we think they are affects us most. Poor thinking habits keeps most people poor, not poor, working habits. Most people work hard, but they don't think hard. The mind is like a factory, a mental factory, and whatever you think about all day long pours ingredients into this mental factory. Can you imagine dumping a barrel of trash into this mental factory every day and coming out with a rich, dynamic, positive life? It can't be done. And you decide what goes into your mental factory don't let anybody just dump anything they want to in your mental factory because you've got to live with the results. Starting tomorrow, what are you going to do that'll make a change in your life's direction? Good question. What are you going to do starting tomorrow? That'll make a difference. Now see, if you don't do something starting tomorrow, that'll make a difference. Guess what? It's going to be the same. And see, that way you can guess what the next five years are going to be like. Look at the last five, because the next five are going to be like the last five unless you made your key tomorrow. Change it all or change a little. Or change something or don't change. It's choice time. You can do whatever you want. What can you do starting tomorrow? It'll make a difference as soon as you plant the garden the busy bugs and the noxious weeds are out to take it. And you've got to learn not only to nourish your values, you've got to learn to do battle with your enemies. Whatever threatens you, I'm asking you to threaten it back. Take care of your responsibility, but don't take anything off anybody. Somebody wants to destroy your chances for a good future by their negative talk, negative thinking, putting it all down. I'm telling you, walk away if you have to. Walk away. Whatever threatens you, threaten it back. Whatever threatens your opportunity, threaten it back. Now, some of our enemies are on the outside, but here's the most important thing to understand. Some of our enemies are on the inside. Let me give you a quick list indifference. You gotta do battle with your own indifference. Now, here's what's important about disciplines. All disciplines affect each other. In fact, here's a good philosophical phrase. Everything affects everything else. Nothing stands alone. Don't be naive in saying, well, this doesn't matter. I'm telling you, everything matters. There are some things that matter more than others, but there isn't anything that doesn't matter. We all pity the man who says, well, this is the only place I let down. Not true, he to take home. Every letdown affects the rest of your performance. Every letdown affects the rest. This is part of the educational process on personal development. If you don't take the walk around the block, you probably won't do the apple a day. If you don't do the apple a day, you probably won't consist, you know, start building your library. If you don't build your library, you probably won't keep a journal and you won't take pictures. And you won't do this. You won't do wise things with your money. Won't do wise things with your time. Won't do wise things with your possibilities and relationships. And the first thing you know, six years of that accumulated and we say, you have messed up. 
So the whole key to reversing that process now is to start picking up these disciplines. Now here's the positive side. Every new discipline affects the rest of your disciplines. Every new one affects the rest. That's why action is so important. The least action, the smallest action, take it. Because when you start accomplishing and the value starts to return from that one action, it'll inspire you to do the next one and the next one and the next one. You start walking around the block, it'll inspire you to get an apple. Get an apple. It'll inspire you to get a book. Get a book. It'll inspire you to get a journal. Get a journal. It'll inspire you to grow. Develop some skills. All disciplines affect each other. Every lack affects the rest. Every new affects the rest. The key is to diminish the lack and set up the new. And you've started a whole new life process. Also, one more thought on discipline. Here's the greatest value of discipline. Self-worth, self-esteem. People are teaching self-esteem these days, but they don't connect it to disciplines, the least lack of discipline, and it starts to erode our psyche. One of the greatest temptations is to just ease up a little bit, right? The, 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 the slightest lack of doing your best starts to erode the psyche instead of doing your best, doing just a little less than your best. Sure enough, you say, well, it's just going to affect my sales. No, it's going to affect your consciousness. It's going to affect your philosophy. Now you've begun in the slightest way to affect your own philosophy. Here's the problem with the least neglect. Neglect starts as an infection, and if you don't take care of it, it becomes a disease. And one neglect leads to another. And the worst of all, when neglect starts, it diminishes our self-worth, our self-confidence, our self-value. You say, well, how can I get back myself? Respect. Yeah, I'm telling you, you don't have to go to 29 classes. All you have to do is start the smallest discipline that now corresponds to your Rowan philosophy, like I should and I could, and I will. No longer will I let neglect stack up on me so that I will have the sorry scenario six years from now, giving some excuse instead of celebrating my progress. That's the key to discipline. Let's get kids involved in the least of discipline. One more, and then one more, and then another one, and then another one, and then some more. And the first thing you know, you're starting to weave the tapestry of a disciplined life into which you can pour more wisdom and more attitude and more strong feeling, more faith and more courage. Now you've got something, a vessel in which to put it. And now the equity start to flow and the early return. I'm telling you, if you'll start this process, the early return will have you so excited you'll commit yourself to this strategy for the rest of your life. You'll never go back to the old ways. Join a new crowd, join a new group. The disciplines to do take action. I recommended the last time I was here, the little book, Richest Man of Babylon. And I said, I've lectured now to over 3 million people in the last 33 years. And I've recommended this little book to almost all of them, I think. Guess how many have actually gone and got this little book answer? Very few. My best guess is 10%. Such an easy thing to do in that last seminar, right? I suggested this little book. Number one is easy to find. Two, it's easy to buy. The most you can pay for, it's six, seven, eight dollars. You can borrow that from your kids. But if it's easy to find and easy to buy, and if it's easy to read, why wouldn't everybody go get it? 90% don't or won't. We don't know the mystery of that. And I'm telling you, 10 years from now, those numbers will still be the same. 10% will, 90% won't. The numbers don't change. Only the faces change. Now here's the key to discipline. Start with the little disciplines. Get excited over the little disciplines and get right on those because those will lead to the big ones. You can't handle the big challenges in life unless you take on the little ones. Make a list of all the things you can do. Get right on those. Discipline yourself for those, both for the results and for the muscle and for the practice. So that when life hands you some big challenges, you'll be ready. You'll have the muscle. I got rich by the time I was 31. Here's the best advice I give my teenage friends. It was easy. What can I tell you? It was hard. No, it was easy. I'm a millionaire by 31. 
let me tell you how I did it. I got three reasons why I got rich by the time I was 31. Let me give you those. Here's number one. I lived in America. I mean, how lucky can you get? America's easy. That's why everybody wants to come here. People haven't plotted and schemed for 50 years saying, if I could just get to Poland, everything, it'd be okay. No, no, the boat people are not desperately trying to get to Vietnam. No, they're not squeezing through the fence to try to get into Mexico. No, Neil Diamond says, looks like everybody's heading for, they're all coming to America. Why? Everybody wants to come here by every means possible to get here. Why? Because America's easy. So if you go home with anything, go home with that. America's easy. Bangladesh is hard. Just take that home. Here's the average yearly income in Bangladesh, $120. That would be hard. Tell me hard versus easy. So America's easy. Cambodia would be hard. The Khmer Rouge killed 2,000 Cambodians to make communism work. That's hard. America is easy. India would be hard. They got their challenges these days. America's easy. And now in about 90 days, you can have that memorized. Tell me that's all you need. I got rich. For the time I was 31, I lived in America. America's easy now. Here's number two. I found an opportunity. That's all you gotta do in America. Search for an opportunity. Take the first one, right? Try it. If that isn't, it leads to another one. Door closes. Another door opens. This is what's exciting about America. It's full of opportunity a chance to try. And then what? Try again. And then what? Try again. Never, never run out of opportunity to try. See if you can't better your life and your health and your future and your bank account and your income. Make your fortune here. I lived in America. One, found an opportunity. Two, here's three. I found a teacher. What a grand and glorious, unique thing that was for me at that time in my life. I found a teacher willing to teach me and his teaching came in two parts. Here's what it was, very simple. One, Mr. Roan, you have evidently messed up between ages 19 and 25. Now I could understand that, but he didn't leave me there, he said. Now here's the answers on how to change it all the next six years so that the next six years won't be like the last six. What an incredible teacher taught me how to have a whole brand new six years. First six, what I messed up. Second six, what? I got it right. Second six years, I became a millionaire. During that second six years, the government was about the same. I'm telling you, interest rates were about what? The same. The pay scale was about what the same. Lord knows my negative relatives were the same. Circumstances were about the same. The economy was about the same. The unions and their philosophy was about the same. What was going on around me was about the same. Then how come I got rich that second six years? I was not the same. I changed. You said, well, Mr. Roan, if you can do that, can anybody do it? Yes, I invite you on that journey. Anytime you want to, you can stay the same so that the next six years to be like the last six, Take a look at the last six years and I'm telling you the next six years of your life is gonna be like the last six. Or unless you wanna count on this short list that we call not much list. Most everybody's counting on this not much list. What if all of your negative relatives turn positive? What would that do for your future and your fortune? What? Not much. Not much. What if prices came drone a little? What will I do for your future? I'm telling you, not much. If the economy gets a little better, what will I do? Not much. Now that the Democrats are in power, what's that gonna do for your future? Not much, we got it. We could get a good debate going here. If the Republicans would have stayed in power, what would that have done? Not much. Hey, we could get a good debate going here. I'm done, it's not much list if you don't make plans of your own. Guess what? you'll probably always fit into someone else's plans. Guess what someone else may have planned for you then? What's gonna make the difference? You're going to have to make the difference. You're going to have to take charge. Now, Mr. Shoaf, 
My teacher gave me a promise and I want to give you that promise. Now here was the promise I got and I bring it to you. Here's what my teacher said. If you will change, Mr. Roan, he said, if you will change, everything will change for you. You don't have to change the government. You don't have to change prices. You don't have to change taxes. Get all that, he said. If you will change, everything will change for you. And the first thing you start changing is what your philosophy. You start changing your mind. You start changing how you think. You start picking up new ideas and information, gather new knowledge, make better decisions about what's valuable. And I'm telling you, if you'll do that, your whole life will change. Your health will change. Your relationship with your family will change. Your ability to cope with challenges and problems will change. I'm telling you, income, promotions, all of it will change. If you will change, it'll all change. If you won't change, it isn't going to change. You can keep your fingers crossed if you want to and hope they'll straighten it out. You can wish for the wind not to blow quite as severe, but I'm telling you, wishing for the wind to change in your favor. We call naive at best. Don't do this any longer. Wish for a better wind. The key is to wish for the wisdom to set a better sail. Utilize whatever wind that blows to take you wherever you want to go. That is the philosophy I picked up at age 25. And it revolutionized my whole life. And here's what I found. I found it was easy. I got rich by the time I was 31. And it was easy. Now here's my definition of easy. Gotta jot this down. My definition of easy meaning. Something I could do. I figure if it's something you can do, it's easy. Now I worked hard at it. I found something I could do which was easy, but I worked hard at it. I got up early and stayed up late. Worked hard that six years, but what I did was easy, meaning it was something I could do. You say, well, Mr. Roan, if it was so easy, how come everybody else around you during that six years, how come they didn't get rich? Here's why it's easy not to. How else would you describe it? That's it. You say no, no, for all of the rest of them, it was hard for them and it was easy for you. That's not true. You couldn't debate me on that in front of this intelligent audience, but here's the challenge. Let me give it to you in the philosophical phrase. I tend to be a little philosophical. Here it is. The things that are easy to do are also easy not to do. That's the difference between success and failure. So you've got the choice here today of one of two easies. Easy to or what? It's easy not to, I can give you in one sentence. How I got ricked by the time I was 31. Here it is. In one sentence, I did not neglect to do the easy things I could do. Every day for six years. Underline, I did not neglect, that's the key. I found something easy I could do that led to fortune and I did not neglect to do it. Major reason for not having everything you want in America major reason for not having more of what you want in America. More health, more money, more power, more influence, more everything. Major reason why you don't get it? Simple answer. Neglect, neglect. And here's the problem with neglect. It starts as an infection. And if you don't take care of it, it becomes a disease. And here's what else is the problem. One neglect leads to another neglect to do wise things with your money. You'll probably neglect to do wise things with your time. Neglect to do wise things with your time. You'll probably neglect to do wise things with your business. One leads to, another leads to another. Pretty soon, neglect has you by the throat. Emptying your purse, emptying your heart, emptying all of your chances for equities and power and all the good things. Neglect. What if you should be walking around the block every day for your good health and you don't? I'm telling you, you're on the wrong track. You should do it, you could do it. You don't do it, that's called formal for disaster. All you've got to do is let that and a few other things accumulate for six years. And now you're driving what you don't want to drive, wearing what you don't want to wear, living where you don't want to live, doing what you don't want to do, maybe having become what you really didn't want to become. I'm telling you, that's it. Just neglect along, drift along, and it's got you by the throat. It'll take all your values, leave you with just a little bit of dust in the summer wind, and it'll soon be gone. 
I hope I said that. Well, that's it. It's where I found myself at age 25. Until my teacher came along and said, Mr. Roan, up till now, you've messed up. Let's see if we can't clean that up. Change it all. I did change my life, not just the money, all the rest of the values that came pouring in. When I understood that it was me, it was me. So take the easy approach. This stuff's easy to figure out. Getting rich is easy. I teach it to teenagers how to be rich by 40, 35 if you're extra bright. This stuff is not difficult. 